Welcome back, folks. Today, we're going to be creating an awesome design. The only way I can describe this design is by calling it kind of a duo style text effect. Now, before I get started, I just want to ask you a, one question, okay? It's, and it's not what I usually ask you. I got a comment recently that said that my designs are too complicated. So I want to hear your feedback. Are my designs too complicated? Leave your opinion in my comments. I want to see or know what you think. All right, let's get started. We are going to start off by going to one of my favorite apps. It is Typecraft. And I keep coming back to this uh, app. Uh, I do have Pro and it's now a pro feature, but it is well worth the Canva subscription fee. So you'll notice at the top that there is an area for text. In the text box, I am going to type in all caps, thunder, pox. And for the font, I'm going to choose one of my fonts that I use quite often. It is Anton Regular. And I'll go back. And so I've got Thunderhawks. I've got Anton regular. I'm going to choose just the regular style. And for the color of text, I am going to choose white. So I'm going to move my little color indicator all the way to the top. And as I do that uh, in the preview section, we can see that it's black and my text is now white. Just so I can see uh, my text. So there's a little bit of contrast there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to increase the height of my text because I want my text to be tall and Typecraft allows me to do that. So I'm going to uh, switch to horizontal and I'm going to grab the end here and move that up. And as I do that, that's going to raise the other side. Uh, I'm now going to switch over to no mirror and I'm going to grab this in the middle and I'm just going to bring it all the way up and try and even it out without uh, distorting the text. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom and I'm going to say add element to design. Now the great thing about this is that it's non-destructive, meaning I can always go back in here and make any changes I want and then update my element. Um, in the meantime, I am now going to place a rectangle on my workspace. I'm just going to press R and that will place it on my workspace. I can also go all the way back up to elements and just search for a square shape and put a square shape on my workspace. But you know what? Why go through all that trouble? when I can just press R and that will do the same thing. I'm going to change the color of my rectangle to black. I'm going to go to position layers and move that black rectangle behind my text. So here it is right here. I'm just going to adjust it a little bit like that. Now I know that I have the top part of this straight, but I really wanted to make it curved or to dip it in the middle. So I'm going to come back here to the panel because it's not destructive. I have the option to edit and that will open up Typecraft once again. Everything I'll keep the same except for down here. I'm going to set it to no mirror and I'm just going to change this a little bit. Now you don't have to do this. You can leave it square if you want, but I'm actually going to come and I'm going to dip this down uh, just a tiny bit like that. And I'll leave it like that. Actually, I'm just going to straighten it out just so that, that those two circles are right on top of one another, keeping it straight. And I'm going to come down here where it says update element, and I'm just going to update the element for it to look like this. So now that I've done this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to share. I'm going to download and I'm going to download this one page as a PNG. I'm going to add another page and I'm going to grab that image that I just downloaded and I'm going to bring it right in back into Canva. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to remove the background. 
Now I always go back into BG Remover to make sure that that background was removed and it was, and I'm very happy. So I'm just gonna close that off. Now I can continue with the next steps. I'm gonna come all the way back up to my elements and I'm gonna grab a couple of elements. So I'm gonna go into elements. I'm gonna go into my recently used. And one of the things that I'm gonna grab is this uh, image of a, um, basketball glove or a softball glove with the actual softball. I'm going to remove that background on that and I'm going to grab my overlay because that's what it is. This is now an overlay and I'm just going to make it a little bit larger and I'm going to grab this image and I'm going to just place it right there and we have the option to twist it so I'm just going to twist it like that. Now I'm also going to go back and I did have an image of just a regular softball. Um, so this right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to twist this over like this and I'm going to layer this uh, in behind a little bit like that. I guess I just want to be a little bit creative. And I'm going to change the uh, color of the white to red and the red to yellow like that. I'm going to go to position in layers. I'm going to grab those two elements, the glove and the baseball, and I'm going to put them behind that overlay. So I'm just going to grab the overlay, bring that on top like that. And now the ball, I want that behind the softball mitt. So I'll just leave that like that. I'm now going to add a black shape behind the second part of the word because I want hawks to be all black. So I'm going to press the R again. That will place a rectangle on my workspace. And I'm going to add this shape here. And I'm going to change the color of that shape to black. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to position and layers and I'm going to move that black shape in behind my overlay but in front of that softball mitt. I'll come back here and I'm going to now just grab everything and just make it a lot larger. So I'll grab everything on my page and I'll make this smaller and I'm just going to resize all of this so that it covers my whole page. Like that. Now, my overlay is black and I don't want it to be black. I want it to be white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that overlay. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to use Duotone to change it to the color of white. So I'll use custom and I'm going to change both the highlights and the shadows to white, pure white. So here we go right here. Now it is all white. Let me make that a little bit larger so that you can see that. And there's one more thing I want to do. So I want to go to elements and I want to add a little bit of a crackle on top of my design. So I am going to use um, a, a crackle that I used earlier. If you're searching for this, you can search for grunge background texture crack and you will find this. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to make a duplicate because I also want to use it over here on this side as well. So uh, let me rotate that a little bit and I'm going to put that right up top there. Like that. I'll make that a little bit bigger too. And for this one, I'm going to rotate it like this. 
and I'm actually going to make it yellow. So I'm going to come up here to the color chooser and I'm going to make it that bright yellow. Now I can leave it like that if I want to, but if you also want to make it a little bit darker, you can do that too by going to edit and going to shadows and applying an outline to make it a little bit thicker. So this is how you would do it. Um, so you can see it does make it a little bit messy at first, but if we um, reduce the size a little bit and we change that outline color to match the yellow, we actually get um, a little bit of a thicker crackle for our design. Now, there's only one thing left to do at this point, and that's to take that or those uh, grunge crackle effects and move them in behind our overlay. So I'm going to go to position and layers, and I'm going to grab those two, and I'm just going to slide them in behind the overlay so that we can't see it. Finally, there's one last step. Let's download this. So I'm going to download. I only want page two, so I'm going to say done and download. I'm going to add another page here. And I'm going to grab that design. So here it is right here. Let's make that a little bit larger so that we can see it. And it is white because it's got that white overlay uh, around it. So we would need to remove the background. And now we can kind of add like a little bit of a 3D effect. So I'm going to grab that. Uh, now it's an image, right? It's no longer uh, text. It's an image. So we're going to go to edit and we're going to go to shadows and we're going to add a drop shadow. This is what it looks like. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove the blur. We are going to increase the intensity. And we're going to reduce the distance. And we're going to change the angle like that. So this is our final product. And I want to hear from you. Did I complicate things? Did you understand what I was doing? Did you like this tutorial? Did you learn anything? It's really important to me that I know that you're learning something from my tutorials. And if you are, press that like button, subscribe and turn your notification bells on so that you know when something new is coming. I'd also like to hear from you. What would you have done? Would you have added this curve from Typecraft or would you have left it absolutely straight? And if you want to hear more about my live sessions, Ask me in the comments. I'll give you more information. I've also got a new form in the description where you can request tutorials that you need that you want to see me make and publish. So that's pretty much it, folks. Let me know if this was too complicated for you. And for now, I'm going to say bye bye until next time.